This is a Pentis, and I actually got two of them last year, uh, and they were outside, but I wasn't sure if they'd overwinter, so I left one out and brought one in, and sure enough, the one outside died. Uh, this one is still going strong, and what I really like about these flowers is that you can press them in a cluster, like this, and then they'll go flat. Or what I really like is they'll look like a star burst by clipping them off here. And then pressing them in open face. And let me like this. And they're just beautiful. The, the shade will go a little bit deeper, but they hold their color well. P-E-M-T-U-S, and if you get one, treat it as an indoor house plant, and they'll add a lot of interest into your arrangements. Also, you can press the leaves. Look at how beautifully green those are. Since most of these are wide open and in really good shape, I'm going to press most of these in an open face fashion. And so I just take the cluster off of the plant and then just quickly snip like this. It goes faster when you just have the whole cluster to rotate. And then you get the idea. And then what I'll do is I will press them face down and put them in rows and, and arrange them face down. And then I'll take a couple of these leaves and also put them in the press. And now this sheet is ready to put into the, uh, the book that will then go and be put into the press, which if you watch some of my videos, you will see is uh, stacking them and putting cement blocks on top and using that as the weight. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm putting that in the book, putting a sheet on top. And then I'm going to fold it over and just make sure that, excuse me for knocking the camera, and just make sure that everything is kind of the way I want it when I fold the book over. Make sure I'm staying in the book. Okay. This round of pressed flowers I brought in the, uh, these are the larger size coral bells, and then I brought in the, some of the uh, forget-me-nots. They're getting pretty spent if you watch the April Garden blog. And when I bring the whole spike in, you can press them in the whole spike, but I tend to break them down. And there's a lot of ones on here because it's been raining and I haven't been able to press that are they're already dead and browned out. So I'm going to pick some of them off. I'm not going to take my time to... I mean, they have to be cleaned off sooner or later. So I'm going to go ahead and pick some of them off now while they're on here before I clip off smaller pieces to actually press. So that's what I'm doing here. Pick those off. Then I cut them down into these smaller pieces and I'll lay them on here so that when I close the book they'll press flat. And the nice thing about coral bells is you can use the clusters small like this. You can use the whole cluster if you press the whole, the whole um, spike. Or you can break these clusters down even to smaller pieces and even into individual pieces. And these are really good for detail work. 
And then to cut these pieces off, I just twirl around like this. And I find if I leave them on the spike and then cut them down when I come in, it's quicker to do it this way. Just twirl the spike around. Sometimes when I get to the end of the spike, I'll go ahead and leave, leave that. And when it comes to forget-me-nots, when I want to press the whole flower open face, and I have showed this in other videos, but I'll show it again. You just take your finger and squeeze this green part underneath here. Squeeze that between your fingers while you gently pull. And they come off really easily if, uh, depending upon how they are, if they're nice and open and, and starting to get to the point where they're going to fall off anyway, they will come off very easily. So again, you can do them open face, you can do them in a cluster, you can do just the tips. So I'll go ahead and finish processing this tray of coral bells and uh, forget-me-nots. Now this sheet's ready to put in the book. Let's just gently slide it in. Put a top sheet on. And then roll it over. And I just try to make sure that nothing's overlapping. Looks like these forget-me-nots are going to be in the way, so I'll just move that one out of the way. Move that one over a little bit. Okay. Here's two more sheets that are ready to go in the press, and this is poached egg right here, and I actually take them off of the stem out in the garden because I only want the perfect blossoms, and I showed these in my vlog for May. And these hold their color for years and years, this nice yellow color, and even the white stays pretty true to, true to white, and they press like tissue paper. But I snip them off the snip, snip them off of the stem right here while I'm out in the yard. So then all I have to do when I come in is put them on the sheet. And then here is the poached egg uh, leaves. And then... Also, I uh, I press them, you know how the in in uh, profile, and here's how they grow. Here's the bud, the little leaf snippet, and then in profile. And then to to round out the page, I've got because I have a couple other sections there. I'm going to put in some uh, viola, and for these, I'm just going to snip the back off. I don't want to press it with a stem on. If when I do the stems, I'll I'll uh, put them on there separate. Just because I don't want the stem uh, stem infringing upon the uh, delicate petals. So you see right there. If you cut too far in, it'll fall apart. And then I usually press them face down. And then something else I have here. This is a uh, a lissum. A lissum press is good. I'm just going to look for, uh, see what kind of shape it's in. That looks like it's in really good shape. So I'll just leave that like that. That's ready to go. Something else that's on this sheet. I only have a couple of them blooming right now. This is another kind of forget-me-not that I didn't show in the May blog. But it is blooming. It's, it's a different, or excuse me, Bleeding Heart. It's a different one even yet. So... I talked about the fern leaf and the one I called the, the domestic one. And this, I don't know what kind this one is, but it's it's a little bit different. These, it's a little bit more akin to the regular one that you see. These flowers aren't nearly as big, but they have that little swoop that goes out here. And then these are the leaves that also press well. And like I said, this is all I have right now blooming, so I just picked what was there. And those will go in the press. 
So these are ready to go. This sheet's just about ready. This is uh, some of that perennial bachelor button that I showed you, and I just snipped the flower off, and then I tape and I pull off these flowers, and then I just kind of scatter them on here and use my tweezers to separate them a little bit. And just do that. These hold their color really well. And then I'll take some of these small bits and just fill in the areas. They're really good for um, miniature work, small details. And then this page would be ready to go. This is some of that chamomile leaf that I was telling you about in the May blog, and it really it presses very nicely, and it's look how wispy it is. It's really good. So I'm going to use that to uh, fill in the rest of this page so that I can so that I can get this in the press, and then I'm going to start on this Korean lilac because it's getting spent and it's going to be on his last leg so if I don't hurry up and get some in the press I'll be out of luck. And chamomile, if you've never smelled it, it smells like green apple. It's got a wonderful smell. Mmm, very aromatic. Okay, so this one is uh, it's done. I don't think I can fit much else in there. All right. In regard to the Korean lilac, I'm going to be pressing both the leaf, which this is what it looks like, and the flower. And here's how it looks on the bush, where I snipped a little bit of the stem, and you can see how it grows in these little cluster pieces. And this stem is kind of thick and very woody, so I'll break it down into parts, and I'll show you what I mean by that. This sheet is basically ready, but I'll either take it down into something like this, because this isn't quite so woody, or I can break it down even further. So it just depends on how you want to do it. Where I'm just using page filler, I'm going to take it down into smaller bits just to, to fill it in a little bit more. Okay, so this is now going to be ready to go in. And 